welcome back to Learning Curves. I'm Anastasia and I am so excited to finally share with you the kegerator. So I have this like weird thing where I like to make my husband cry with gifts <laughs> and I'm pretty good at it. I'm happy to do a video on that exclusively. Anyway, his birthday's October 3rd and yes, his gift this year got him weepy at least. I count it. But it made me think about one of my favorite ones that I've made, the kegerator. I bought a vintage fridge and I converted it into a kegerator. I did so much research and it turns out the vintage fridge with taps on the door is easiest to make yourself. I would argue the least expensive and the cutest. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I came to those conclusions and how you yourself can make a kegerator for a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot easier than you think. Seriously, like, can you operate a drill? Great. You got a kegerator. That's it. Mostly. So when making a kegerator, you have a few decisions to make. Do you want to use a mini fridge or a full fridge? And do you want it to be a top tap or door taps? Before starting my research, I assumed that the mini fridge top tap would be the easiest to make. Let me tell you why that's not the case. In a mini fridge, the Freon runs, I mean, it might run lots of places, but I know that it runs through the top. And in order to drill, in order to get the hole for the tubing to fit through, you have to pry the top off, like the external top off. You've got to dig through the insulation, like excavate through it to find the Freon lines, and then find where you can cut your hole, cut your hole, cut a larger piece of wood or something to help spread the weight out from that tower, because that tower doesn't weigh nothing, especially depending on the tap you have on it. Cut space out of the insulation for that wood reinforcement to sit, and run your tubing through it. The anatomy inside is even more complicated because you have to have a fan inside of the refrigerator cooling up through the tower. If you don't do that, then the beer that's in the tower after you've poured your first beer will get warm and then you'll have a foamy first pour every time you get going again. So when I learned all of that, I was humbled and I thought, Actually, it delayed me starting on the kegerator because I was like, this seems, this seems like a lot. I don't know. If you nick a Freon line, the whole fridge is, is done. You're done. Especially when I learned from the pictures I saw of the anatomy, the door of a vintage refrigerator has aluminum on the inside, a bunch of insulation, which could have asbestos in it, so you gotta be careful, and then the outside, which is steel, so thicker heavier. A lot of them had two metal bars that, so you'd have the outside, the insulation, and then two metal bars that would hold the insulation in before the inside layer was put on the door. But that's it in the body of the door. So you didn't have to worry as much about drilling your holes for your taps. So really, in order to make a kegerator, especially a front tapped vintage refrigerator kegerator, all you have to do is get a kegerator kit. You can piece together a kit yourself, but I'll link in the description box the kit that I bought, and you get a vintage refrigerator, and you drill holes in it, and you hook it up. That's pretty much it. Is that all I did? No. I, no, I did a lot more. We'll talk about that. So I started my hunt. I was able to get this one for 180. There were others that were inside maybe not so pretty or had some other challenges with them. Okay, so I am now looking on Facebook Marketplace in St. Louis. I see a $75 one, a $100, $0, uh, two more that are 150, another that's 100. I mean, and two of these have had their prices decreased. These are pretty good deals for kegerators, especially knowing that you can sell a kegerator for a lot lot of money. So go on to Facebook Marketplace, go on to Craigslist, find yourself an inexpensive or even free vintage refrigerator. Make sure it works, of course. Drill your holes and you're done. A little word of caution on the drilling the holes. So the inside is aluminum, the outside is steel. I recommend if you do not feel incredibly comfortable drilling those holes yourself, Start with the inside. Know there's going to be much less resistance on the inside. It's gonna be a lot easier to drill those holes through the aluminum. The one I bought had a butter dish on the door, so I went in that way so there wasn't a whole lot of insulation that I had to go through. So I drilled the hole from the inside and it went really smoothly. And then I was a little arrogant going then to the outside. The outside was much harder. So mine did just kind of a little, the drill kind of 
whatever that is. <laughs> but I wish I would have given it a little more gusto and pushed down a little harder. Can you do this with a contemporary refrigerator? Absolutely. Do I know anything about the anatomy of modern refrigerators? Nope, sure don't. Well, that's not true. I know one thing because as I was doing my research about vintage refrigerators, I was like, I don't want this to cost me $100 a month in increased energy bills. So doing some research into the cost of running a refrigerator, specifically a vintage refrigerator, I learned that in the 50s and 60s, refrigerators were, in order to be affordable, required to be relatively energy efficient. And it wasn't until we created auto defrost. We, I didn't do it, but you know, people created auto defrost, which is the thing that keeps our refrigerators and freezers from turning into big blocks of ice. You know, they periodically turn on and do the thing. They add a significant amount of energy use to that appliance. So a vintage refrigerator that does not have auto defrost is actually relatively energy efficient. So I was feeling pretty good because I definitely didn't want to buy a brand new refrigerator and turn it into a kegerator. And I definitely wanted to do door mount. I didn't want to have to deal with making a fan or purchasing a kit with a fan to run up through the tower. I didn't want to have to do the reinforcement thing. I didn't want to have to dig around free online. So Vintage refrigerator, door mount taps, here I am. I did not stop there. I did not stop there. So my husband is a big Steelers fan. I don't think there's any other kind, but we want our basement to feel like a sports bar slash movie theater. So we have a few adjustments that we're gradually making throughout our lives to get closer and closer to those ends. One of those things is this kegerator. So the vintage refrigerator I purchased, we get it to my mom's garage. She had agreed to let me work on it there. So I disassembled the refrigerator in order to be able to better clean it and better fully paint every piece of it. And also for ease of sanding, for all the reasons, I decided to disassemble it. So I made sure that as I was taking it apart, I was taking pictures and video so I could see what went where <laughs> and how it came off so I would know how to put it back together. Very much recommend that. I did replace a few gaskets, not the rubber gasket in the door, but I did replace the gaskets behind the hinges. That was pretty easy. I traced them from the existing ones and then cut them with an X-Acto knife. For cleaning it, I really just used warm water and dish soap. I did use Loctite rust neutralizer a few places. It was clear to other people, not to me somehow, that someone had tried to paint the refrigerator previously. Regardless, I knew I wanted to paint it something else. And I shared in my fireplace makeover video that like I know for sanding you need to knock the shine off, but I don't, I don't like get it apparently. So I went ham on sanding this and I just sanded pretty much everything off, which was maybe not a good idea for someone who was pregnant, sanding paint that is from the 1960s, which I think maybe could have still had lead in it, right? I had a big mask on that was rated to be lead safe, but this is probably not a good idea. Anyway, so I sanded it all down. I spent hours and hours at a Sherwin-Williams store. I literally was there for like three or four hours talking to this guy about paint. And I went to an automotive parts store, I ended up purchasing an automotive primer to prime everything. So I primed the entire thing, I wet sanded, and here's the deal. My understanding of wet sanding, or the way that I read it initially, was prime it, you let it dry, and then you get it wet and sand it. Which to me makes sense because then you're washing off whatever you sand off of it. But now I'm starting to think that wet sanding is when you actually sand it while the paint is still wet. Can someone please tell me in the comments? But I set up this paint space in my mom's garage where I hung up from the ceiling these one by twos, I don't know, these small pieces of wood kind of framed out the garage and then I draped plastic over all of them. So I had this whole paint room that looked like Dexter was about to come in and murder someone and then I, got all suited up and I looked like a chemistry teacher is gonna go cook up some meth. My sister-in-law actually, <laughs> she called it breaking waters because I was pregnant and breaking bad, it's funny. So the agency I work for, part of what we do requires a high level of color accuracy in print. We have someone who works for the company who's a huge Steelers fan and I asked him if he knew what 
color Steelers Yellow was. I found out that at least in 2007, Steelers Yellow was Pantone 1235, and a wonderful man from our color management center printed out a color reference for me that was exactly PMS 1235. I took that with me to Sherman Williams and I said this, I want this and I want it to be automotive high shine finish. And he's like, well, you can't really do that. You, I can get you this color and I can get you the highest shine I can, which is not gonna be that high shine. And then you could sand it down and then add a high gloss finish. So that was my plan. He did a custom mix. He eyeballed it from the swatch. He wasn't really able to use that swatch and paint builds are not RGB or CMYK or something that I could have used the build from knowing the PMS color build. So he very patiently mixed it. He had to tweak it once or twice. It looked perfect to me. So I left with a bucket and I brought in a sample of that paint to our color guys. They read it with a spectrometer and that paint is within two Delta E's of PMS 1235, which means that our refrigerator is exactly Pantone Steelers yellow. <laughs> I'm really proud of that. But my husband's like, you made me a yellow kegerator. And then I purchased a sprayer and the one I got was like, great for trim. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever, that's fine. The trim sprayer is spray like, <laughs> like it took so long. It took so long, it was really painful. And it was really hot in that giant suit, in that giant plastic tent, in August and September. <laughs> Don't recommend that. I mean, the spray gun was pretty cheap, but it was also pretty cheap. I think I did two coats of the primer and three or four coats of the yellow. And after that, I decided, nope, I do not wanna sand this down and add on a high shine finish. This is perfect, we're done here. Thanks so much, have a good day. I do kind of wish that I would have just done it, not just for the high shine, but for the protective finish because we got some nicks in it from moving it and reassembling it. And it's fine, like nobody else cares and nobody else is, like notices, but why, why put all this time and effort into it to have it not be super perfect? But also like, why put all this time and effort into it at all? <laughs> nobody else cares about the Pantone Steelers yellow as much as I do. I'm really excited about that. Other people are like, yeah, it's yellow. Steelers, I guess. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you feel empowered to make yourself a kegerator and know that it doesn't have to have beer in it. Ours is actually, it isn't, I do not recommend making a kegerator right before you have a child, like your first child, because that kegerator has not been used nearly as much as it would have been had I made it the year prior, but alas we like it i think it's a beautiful thing i like seeing it in our basement i'm proud of having made it and i think it's something that has a lot more wow than it really takes <laughs> thanks so much for watching if you like this video please like this video and please subscribe i'll see you next time bye my husband's a locksmith and locksmiths often have to bore holes through doors by just like reading them the phone book or whatever do you guys like mom jokes in our house, they're called mom jokes. I thought about starting to like put some on Instagram reels or something. Tell me if you like them and then I'll do that. And then you can ugh at me. But anyway, that's one.